There is talk about transatlantic crisis ever since the end of the Cold War. And as some of you will remember, uh, Jim certainly will, even before, <laughs> yeah. even before the end of the Cold War. Now I think what is undeniable that there is a drifting apart of the two sides of the Atlantic politically, I think temporarily at least halted by the banking and financial crisis uh, from uh, 2008 onwards. We should take an, we should not take an overly alarmist, alarmistic view here. The economic underpinnings, I think, of the transatlantic relationship are still very strong. And as, a, as a businessman, I'd like to start with a few facts. Fact is um, that uh, as far as the economies, the economies are concerned, our our two economies are more closely intertwined, I think, uh, than ever. Uh, fact is that this is still, I think, by comparison, the single largest of the largest trading area, the North Atlantic trading area that we have in the world. Uh, the trade of goods and services of more than a trillion dollar per, per year. Uh, direct investment, foreign direct investment on both sides of the land of almost three trillion uh, US dollars. I think these figures show that we have a very vibrant, dynamic, economic relationship. And also, by the way, in comparison to the investments uh, the US as well as European countries or companies make in, in Asia and in China in particular. Um, and that relationship could certainly be further energized by, I don't know what the exact term is today, uh, some people call it TTIP, let's say transatlantic a free trade zone, or a more integrated free trade zone. There are many obstacles, for sure, before that happens, but I think it's certainly worth a determined push by uh, governments now that the elections in the US, as Obama is in the second and last term, but also in France and most recently in Germany uh, are behind us.